that make sense? Okay. So we're back here, our chair is touching the wheel, and I'm going to get my hands wet. I'm going to turn the wheel on full power. Some wheels have a button on the side, some of them have a foot pedal. And in this case, I've got a foot pedal, and I'm going to use it up here so that you can see where I'm going with the speed. And I'm going to turn my wheel on full power. My left elbow is, my left elbow is going to go into my hip socket, and I'm going to press the heel of my left hand into the side of the clay. And the right hand will be a fist close tight to my body. I'm going to come down with my hands touching, leaning in, and then releasing your hands slowly. So my hands are touching, they're connected, they're tight to my body, they're being supported by my body. If I have my elbows flying around in circles, I'm not going to have any stability. So it's very important that you keep everything close and tight and centered. It's very much like taking a martial arts class. Your core and your center are what creates stability and strength and power over this machine in the clay. So try to keep everything centered, leaning your elbow, leaning your heel of your hand in. If I release my hands too quickly, it's going to leave it going off center. But if I allow my hands to release slowly, as it does a revolution, it will release in an even way. Clean off the edge or edge of the wheel, and you release your hands slowly. You've now gone through the entire first section of steps in using the wheel. Um, this is how you center your clay. If you come and learn in my class, what I will probably do once you get this is I will have you do it again. Because if you don't do it three or four times, you don't own it. So three times and you own it, I'm going to hit your clay off center. Once again, elbow in the hip socket, not with my fingers, but with the heel of my hand, putting my hands together. I apply pressure, release hands slowly, and now it's on center. Okay? Now we're going to move on to opening your clay. And in this case, it's sort of like um, square dancing or something, you're going to have to move your chair back. Sometimes I actually make you move your chair back three feet. And the reason why is to stop you from doing this. As soon as you put your elbows on your knees, your success ratio goes down like 90%. So if you can keep your hands from touching your knees, keep your elbows from touching your knees, you're gonna be 100% more successful. Lean your upper body onto the wheel head on the splash pad. So if you put your body weight here, then the only thing that moves is your wrists. It's very important. So, getting the clay wet, I take my hands and my thumbs touch that little center dot. And then they're gonna go down into the clay together until they go down about halfway. After that, release hands. You're going down about halfway. After this step, there's a certain point where your hands can't go any farther. You're either gonna have to spread your thumbs apart, or you're gonna have to lift your arms up off the splash pan in order to get down into the clay we don't want either one of those two things to happen. So you stop this position and you switch to position two. Separating your hand, your left hand becomes a platform. It's not squeezing the clay. It's just here as a guide. And then you're gonna drop your fingers down just above the wheel head. So I open it up to just above the wheel head, but not all the way to the bottom. Otherwise you're gonna have a hole in your cup. Then I'm going to pull my fingers back towards me, opening the bottom of the clay so that I have a flat base on the bottom. Rinse off my hands a little bit. If you were to put your fingers inside the clay, there would be this big kind of inside trench here. Make a dent on the outside. I'm using two hands to support. And I just take my sponge. I'm spinning water. Hopefully it's not getting all over the lens. Anyway, so I have a a dent on the outside and a dent on the inside, which gives me this big lump of clay to kind of grab onto. Next step, slow down the wheel. Now these Thomas wheels and a few of the Brent wheels that have this separate foot pedal are very touchy and it's just as easy for you to work with them with the foot pedal up above sitting on the edge of the wheel as it is to have it on the floor, okay? So, add a little water. <clears throat> left hand on the splash pan, you're going to drop your fingers in and your thumb on the outside. I'm going to take my sponge and 
I'm going to have it in my hand like this and press it against my thumb. If I do this without, it's my knuckle pressing against my thumb. And I'm going to pinch with my arms locked on the splash pan. I'm moving up the clay as I pinch until I get to the top. Releasing your hand slowly. It's now a little bit taller. It's not all the height that I can get out of this clay, but it's definitely more than it was. So as you can see, it's got some little rings. You can see them on the inside of the clay as well. Those little rings are where my finger has touched on the clay and pushed it together. And in pushing it together, it has nowhere else to go but up. It can't go down. So now I'm gonna add a little water, drop my fingers inside. My wrists are up. My arms are attached with all my body weight to the splash pan. And I'm going to move up the side of the clay. See if I can get a little more height out of this. To the top. Release hands slowly. And that's about exactly what I need for one nice sized cup. It's a little tall skinny cup, but it'll work. Before being finished with this particular pot, I want to compact the lip. The steps for compacting the lip are, get your fingers wet in your left hand. Allow the clay to slide through your fingers without punching, pinching the clay, without changing its shape. And then right above where your fingers are at, you're gonna press down with the sponge to compact the lip. It, it makes it stronger. It doesn't have the little jaggy rough edges, so it's nicer for you to drink out of. I'm going to clean the outside of the wheel. I'm going to clean the inside of the wheel. Take the bottom of that pot, smooth it out, and get the extra water out of the inside. Now we have an opportunity to shape your cup. So I'm going to take a rib tool. And this is just one rib tool, one example of a rib tool. So I can add a little water. Take my rib tool. A rib tool, this one is a metal rib tool. It's kind of nice because it scrapes some of that extra slip off the edge and makes your cup a little bit stronger as, as well as smoother. But I'm gonna take it on the inside. My right hand is up in the air and I'm supporting it with my left hand. And I'm gonna go in and just lay it against the clay like I'm spreading peanut butter. I can press out the sides of the clay. I don't think that I want the top of my pot to be out so wide. I could even use the rib tool to change the shape of the top, allowing it to have nice, consistent, even pressure. You want to kind of keep it cleaned off. Seems like a nice enough shape for a cup. So now that I'm happy with my shape, and it could be skinny or tall or fat or short, however you want, so long as it can hold some coffee, as far as I'm concerned, a cup can't hold coffee, it's not worth having. And then stop your wheel, and we start to save our project. So, I'm gonna grab a CD, just a moment. For a project this size, a used CD is a, a perfect size of a bat to put your project away in the cupboard without having to take up too much room. I want to be sure that I put water on the wheel head and then I'm going to take my wire cutter and you tighten your wire cutter and press it down so it's pushed down. If you don't push down then I'll make it go from your side to mine. If I don't push down, then I might slice through the center of the cup. So you pull back quickly and pull the water under the pot. Set your wire cutter down. And just kind of slide the pot off. Put it on top of your little CD. And now I'm ready for putting it away in the cupboard so that it can be there for tomorrow. I'm going to go through all these steps one more time so that you can see how to make a second cup in case you goof up on the first one and we can repeat everything nice and quickly. So I'm going to set that down. Take a break. And so I need to clean off my wheel head. Now we're cleaning my wheel. 
there's really no reason to spend all your time scrubbing. You can just use your sponge or your tools to clean the top of the wheel off. And after I'm totally done, I'll remove the splash pan and um, clean the splash pan and the bucket and all the tools. But for now, this will be enough. Remember, not too much water because your, your ball of clay will go flying. It'll go sliding across. So this is just enough to make it damp. I'm going to grab a second thing of clay. Notice I'm not squishing it with my fingers. I'm not trying to actually put any more air into the clay. Simply taking it and using the palm of my hand to beat the clay into submission. Many potters will have you wedge the clay. The stuff we get from Clay Art Center is usually pretty free from any air pockets, so it works for me. Um, if you're recycling clay, you will need to wedge the clay to get all the air out and to make it a smooth consistency, but for now, this will do. So, once again to review, I have my tools, I have my bucket of water, I have my clay, it's cut into the right amounts, it's about a baseball size, and I've got it on the center of a dampened wheel head. I'm going to make it go full speed ahead. I take my left hand, put it in my hip socket, lean forward, and then release hands slowly. I don't want to push my hand down and make a dent in the top. That's not my intention when I'm centering. My intention for centering is just to put the entire pot on center. Release hands slowly. Step two, move your chair back three feet. Push your hands down until they go halfway. With the two fingers together, it tends to maintain an opening that's on center. If it's off center, it becomes a new problem you have to solve and it's more frustrating. Next step, using your left hand as a platform, do not squeeze the clay, just create a platform. Anchoring once again on the splash pan, you drop your fingers down towards the base, just above the wheel head, so you have room for a bottom of your cup, and pull your fingers back towards your body to open the center of the clay. So as you can see, I can put my finger in there and there's an opening at the bottom that's wider than the rest. Make a dent on the outside by supporting your hands. Clean off the wheel head so it doesn't get in your way. And now, slow the wheel down. Add water to the clay. Grabbing onto it with your fingers and your thumb of your left hand. You're going to support your left hand with the right knuckle. Do one pull. Now this would be successful, but if you left your cup and the walls were that thick, it would be very disappointing. That's too thick for a cup. It would be very heavy, even without any coffee. So if you want to have a good latte in the morning, you need to be able to at least lift it. So, putting our fingers in. Once again, all of our upper body weight is supported not on your knees. It's supported on the sides of the splash pan. Release. And now we have a nice little cup. Want to make sure to take the water out. I'm going to do maybe one more pull just to kind of thin out the sides. Get the most from your clay. Throwing rings in or take them out, doesn't matter. 
That's kind of personal taste. This time I'm going to use the rib tool on the outside. And I'm just smoothing out that surface. Very nice. Cute little pot. It's kind of almost like a little glass. It's got a very thin, nice lip. Let's take the last of the water out of the inside. Sometimes you have to be sort of careful not to bump the sides. Support your hand. Release. And we're done. Plaster bat. Put some water on the wheel head. And keeping the wire tight, press straight down. And if you have trouble getting things off the wheel, especially with the larger pot, later on in the class we'll be doing bigger pieces, you can actually slide it directly onto your bat just by pushing. This is plaster, so the water wanted to get um, sticky right away, but it works just fine. And now my pot is ready for tomorrow. On day two, we will trim the pot, and then we'll attach a handle. We'll pull an attach handle. So that's it.